This video is sponsored by ZWCAD. More about them later in the video. Our career journey takes many different paths. Obviously we just had a great presentation at Swinburne University. And the path you take dictates what lessons you learn. Your salary is a drug. Companies pay to stop you from following your dreams. Do you agree with that or not? And when you learn them and how your career involves. Yes, where a lot of time they are trying to progress you or keep you, especially if you're a good employee, they'll want to try and pay you more, so it's harder for you to move on. But sometimes moving on is the right decision. These are the five lessons that I've learned from my 20 years in structural engineering. See, when most people want to take out a career path, they're thinking about moving into those bigger firms. Those bigger firms have more prestigious projects. So you get to really shape the skyline of the city. I was fortunate enough to have a couple of friends working in a smaller firm and able to get a job there that allowed me to progress my career in a different direction. And that was really invaluable to me becoming a better engineer. You see, at smaller firms, you have to have more hands-on design experience as you have a lot of projects and not so many people to oversee them. So it means that you get your hands dirty earlier, which is really beneficial as a structural engineer. See, the more design experience that you get, the better engineer you become. See, just when you're just out of university, you only really know how to analyze it and get to the correct size and shape of a specific structure. But to actually design a building, you not only have to see what the correct shape is, but also document it effectively so that someone can understand. So there's a big difference between analysis and design. Design really encompasses all those other aspects about how you build it, side access, and other features allowing someone to put together a building effectively. The only way that you get good at design is through practice and experience. There's really no other shortcut. And you need to work with a lot of other good engineers as well to get that experience. So being at a smaller firm, so I got to work on a lot of different projects and a lot of award-winning projects as well, meaning they had complex analysis that I needed to go into to make sure the building would be safe and efficient for the budgets that they were trying to hit. With that, it gave me invaluable experience between design and analysis, and it means that I became a more confident engineer. And when I moved up to those bigger projects, I quickly realized that those bigger projects are just a scaled up version of those smaller projects. So some of those unique solutions that I came up with those smaller projects and the problem solving abilities that I learned there, I was able to replicate them on the bigger projects and be more confident in my design solutions. So it really helped me accelerate my career later. Not that I knew it at the time, but it was something that was invaluable and I'll never give it up for the experience I got at that smaller firm. Another top experience that I got at that smaller firm was learning the value of documentation. Documentation can seem one of those after effects that you might not think about. Any communicable material that is used to describe, explain, or instruct regarding some attributes of an object, system, or procedure, such as its parts. Do you want me to keep reading? No. And we can hear from Siri just then what she thought VO documentation was. But it's really about explaining the information of your analysis to your design level so that someone can build it and understand it. And if you shortcut this process, it will cost you a lot of money in the long run. Especially working at those smaller firms, you get to see the budgets in and out and the cost that is affected associated with it. So you can reevaluate why that cost actually occurred. Reducing the time in the documentation phase and pushing it off into the site phase. Now site phase becomes more expensive as you need to have a lot of back and forth with the builder. It takes long to understand your documentation where if you spend a little bit more time up front, it will save you so much time in the long run as to have a clear understanding of what your project was trying to achieve, the details that they needed to consider and some of the cost implications against it. So not only does it save you money, but also saves the client money in the long run as there's no questions about what was actually needed to be designed and built. And you can see. Is there something else I can help with? No, there's nothing else you can interrupt Siri. Please close down. And how to actually document something in such a way that someone can understand it better. It's not something that is very intuitive to start off with unless you have that experience. And again, similar with the smaller projects, it means you get a lot of more repetition dealing with a lot of different people. You see at my consulting, I've got key benefits of working on how to design those more complex systems, making sure they're fitting within budget, not only my budget, but also the client's budget. And if I was working at those bigger firms, someone else would have been doing this for me. So those, those experiences at that smaller firm allowed me to progress my career further and faster than if I started at a bigger firm. This brings us nicely into the sponsor of this video, ZWCAD. You see, ZWCAD has API, so it allows you to work it into your digital workflows. So you can start off with the BIM, work it into your digital workflow for analysis and design, then come back and allow you to manipulate the drawings. And I've been trying out ZWCAD, and I think that everyone should give it a go. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do I want to pick up another CAD software? I'm familiar with the one I'm currently using. However, when you look at ZWCAD's interface and commands, it feels very familiar. So it's something that's very easy to pick up and use. And guess what? It's fully compatible with DWG formats, along with various other industry standard file formats, ensuring the high 
highest level of compatibility when exchanging data. But there's many benefits that ZWCAD has over your traditional CAD software, such as it can be a lighter install, as you can pick only the aspects that you need to install. It also runs a lot faster too. Whether you're zooming in and out, panning, or just general drafting tasks, it may be up to 19 times faster, allowing you to meet those deadlines with time to spare. One of these key features is the smart mouse feature. This allows you to customize different mouse actions to different commands. So you can customize the common actions that you normally use, meaning that you can draft faster. There's two ways that you can purchase CWCAD. You can either do it on a subscription basis or a perpetual license. So you only need to pay once and use it forever. No need to sign up to any of those subscription services. So you can try ZWCAD in the link in the below description for 30 days on a trial basis. Now let's go back to some of the stuff that I've learned through my 20 years as a structural engineer. And I moved into a bigger firm, which was known as Hyder at the time, but is now commonly known as Arcadis. And I got to work on some bigger projects and understanding the benefits of what those bigger projects give you. It means you have more time to focus on your design, but those projects are bigger, so you need to work in a bigger team. So I got to learn some valuable aspects of teamwork and how to work in with a bigger team with different experiences. Working with a team was something I was quite common with from university and even working at a smaller company, you are in a team mentality. But where I got my true benefits was with an opportunity that I got offered. Now this was working on a project called Casey Central, which was a big shopping center down in Melbourne. So not only did I get to start off with helping with the design, designing the project from start to finish, so I had a thorough understanding of what the design was and why I did things a certain way. This gave me a really good backing about when I was on site to see how things were put together and how I could improve my designs in the future. There was just a couple of lessons here and this was about sitting down and learning from the builders there about some of the hardships that they had and some of the benefits that they would see in their designs or recommendations for changes in the future. And now the first one was working with the steel contractor, which was obviously the first frame that went up in the building. And he gave a couple of tips about what he's seen in the past and what actually makes it cheaper for him to build that building. And there was a couple of things that I learned through talking through that builder. You see, the first up was the base plates on the columns. While some aspects, if you're trying to eliminate the material, two bolts will be suffice and you have a little small base plate. You see, it's really quite efficient. From a design's perspective, you've got the minimum amount that you need to make sure it's safe. However, those two bolts would mean that it would be more costly to construct that building. When you're erecting the steel columns before you put any of the frame up, you need to prop those columns if they only have two bolts as they're not stable. So it's a lot better to have four bolts in those positions, meaning that you can put the building up, stand the column up without any props, while you come with the additional aspects of putting the structure over the top. Why it is a little bit more material and a little bit more time consuming for the builder, in the end, it saves him a lot more time as he doesn't need to have those props in place. So having a significant reduction in the cost of construction as you can rely the structure in a temporary state. Another aspect was also about the bracing of that building. You see, when you've got a big building, you're trying to eliminate as much material as possible. And cross bracing typically is just intention. So there needs no need for any of those buckling actions. It means that you can have a really efficient design and really eliminate the amount of material in there. However, that saving can also be a negative if you've got a big structure and you need to first set up the building. If you use that same cross bracing, it means your building is not stable until you've built the whole frame and got multiple frames engaged. The more you tension those rods, it can affect and shape the building and make it not stable. Where if you do that first bay, where they're gonna start from with either angle cross bracing or struts, it means that you can have that first base stable without the need of how much tension you needed to put into it. So you can be a significant amount of time saving by just having a look and detailing it effectively and talking to the contractor about where he wants to start and how you can modify the design, meaning that he doesn't need to put additional braces in the structure, saving him a lot of time and money in the long run. There was also a lot of precast in this structure. And so having a lot of discussions with the precast, it was also invaluable at this stage as well as he had been many different projects and worked with many different contractors. And this is where we had a bespoke connection that was trying to achieve a certain goal. And so by having that discussion, I got invaluable experience about how I can add that to my next design, meaning that I can save time and money in the long run as well. I would say that you should spend at least one or two years on site every day seeing some of the trials and tribulations that they have to construct your building. Yes, it's really easy to document on the page, but for them to put it together can be really time consuming and complex. And the easier that you make it for them to build that building, the less likely they are to cut corners or make any mistakes or just misinterpret your design. 
my end of my time at Arcados, I was getting a lot of invaluable experience, having a lot of impact with different people and aspects and building my career more effectively. But this is where I decided that I needed to have another career move to help progress my career further. And I moved on to WSP. And this is probably one of the best decisions that I've made throughout my career. And this is where I got the opportunity to move up to Brisbane, to work on a really big iconic project. Really a lot of upsides to saying yes. And this is where I said yes and became a lead engineer on a major project that was iconic, that will shape the skyline of Brisbane forever and affect how the building is used. You can see it's got four unique towers on it with a unique sky deck. And I created the tender design documentation. Basically is it in place today without many changes. This is where I really got my teeth dirty and became a better engineer and understanding how to deal with bigger clients and the benefits of being outside your comfort zone. As most of the time, if you're not pushing those boundaries, you don't know how far you can go and the benefits that you have to offer. So I was able to jump in there, travel up to Brisbane, which was a little bit scary, go outside where my support structure was and be able to work on bigger and better projects. And I became one of the design excellence leads within WSP Australia. So this means that I was helping improve the quality of the engineering that was coming out, fixing projects that needed fixing and really looking into the details of how to structure things. And without my previous experience at either Maya Consulting or Hyder Consulting and bringing those two combined together, I wouldn't have been as strong an engineer as what I am and confidence in my knowledge to be able to pass it on to other people and sit in the direction of such a major engineering firm within Australia. If you want to learn more about a simple lesson that I also learned throughout my career, I have a link to a video here about something that you probably don't know, but will make your design so much easier. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without their support, this type of content would not be possible at the quality that's delivered today. Have you ever come and made a decision where you took a pay cut and it's totally worth it? Me personally, I haven't, haven't taken a pay cut personally, but. I definitely probably should have moved on because the, the move on to zero was a little bit scary and something I probably wish I'd done a little bit earlier. My biggest failure has been, like, I've, I've worked on a lot of projects that weren't my failures that I had to fix. Um, probably can't talk a lot about them, but some of the stuff is just um, not doing the numbers. It's probably something that a director got really angry at me one time because I just tried to come to them for an answer. It's only good things are going to come from it. You're either going to learn progress or something better is going to come along. We should become what you want. But yeah, become what you want, but, but also looking for your passion. So what So what? What do you enjoy the most? Now, there is going to be hard times, there's going to be stuff that you don't enjoy at work. You know, it's, it's like anything you do. But provided you're not, you're not, you've got to enjoy most of what you do. If you do find your passion, you'll find that you'll get better than anyone around you because everyone is just doing there for the paycheck.